Hi, welcome to another video. This is a quick intro on the, as you see, the uh, MSF time uh, code. Um, how to use it with a PIC 16F877 or just the intro, it's not the whole code, just to detect the seconds. Uh, I'll leave this on here for a minute. You can watch this actual, this whole clock when the uh, transmitter was used to be in rugby. It's now somewhere in Cumbria. Uh, I'll just let you watch this for a second. You watch this one. This is a MSF receiver. There we go. Minute start. Right. How how um, you going to get this clock running? Well, first of all, what's the MSF and etc. So if I just point you to the screen for a second. So let's see. Uh, look up the um, NPL. <coughs> should come up, National Physical Laboratory, type in here, you can see it can't you, time MSF time, you're going to need this to uh, decode the signals, so type in the uh, search bar at the top, MSF time, let's focus this, scroll down, all the standard questions, what does MSF stand for? MSF is actually the um, call sign for the transmitter. M was uh, a point to do it. I don't know where SF came from, nor does Wikipedia actually. But, uh, there we go. Is it MSF radio time signal? Click on that. That's the MSF radio time signal. Scroll down to the bottom. You'll get the information sheet, which is here. Uh, download it at your leisure obviously and well just have a good read you need to understand it for so the basics <coughs> what we're doing with this pick is at the beginning of each second the 60 kilohertz carrier drops for 500 milliseconds as half a second so with this uh, pick 16F877 we're detecting this 500 millisecond drop that's all we're doing for the time being just a quick intro. Um, we're, we're detecting this drop and then zeroing the seconds. So what I've got is actually the clock running slightly fast so we don't miss any of this uh, 500 millisecond start. Um, let me just, this camera tripod needs adjusting. Bear with me for a second. Well this is only any good for pick microcontrollers using basic pro as with all my other videos so if I get rid of this that uh, gives you some understanding of NPL uh, and the MSF time code get rid of all this so it's now in, yeah, it's in Cumbria there's a bit of history it used to be rugby time clock rugby in Warwickshire uh, get rid of that actually I don't want any of this shut the whole internet down right using Microcode Studio and Pick Basic Pro just open to get you started. Open some, open a, go to open a file. Now I've got it on example, so I've got Pick Basic Pro examples and then the board uh, it's a Lab X1 using the 16F887. If you open that file, Here's all the uh, sort of um, examples for that board. You just want the clock X. So what I did, use this file, uh, use this program, get rid of this hand cell and all that sort of stuff. It's making, <coughs> excuse me, it's making the 887 digit all, but it doesn't work for the 877. So just scroll down there. That's the basic clock using an interrupt to generate seconds, minutes and hours. So we get a bit of, yeah, that's what you want. Close it down. Right, here's mine. So with all the you know, stuff you don't need cut out. So this, this ticks from the intro, you don't need that. So put the apostrophe to remove that statement. It sort of rems it out. Or rems the old, te old technology from basic, I guess, in the old days. All we're doing, create uh, two variable words, M and N. That N cell you, I told you to get rid of, Adcom 1 equals 7, that works well for the uh, 877. 
um, pause, just gives the LCD time to start up. Right, that's the initial time for my clock update. You can leave the update on main loop. So I've got rid of all the buttons, don't need that at the moment. LCD update. You should by now be familiar with the $FE1, clear the screen, etc. for my other videos. This is all the clock bit, so forget this, you're not interested in that. Well, MSF start, or start MSF. This is the bit you need just to get you going. Let me uh, make sure you're focused. Right, so how do you receive a signal? Externally, get it onto your pick. So I'm using the command pulse in. Make sure you're in focus. Right, pulse in, you can pick any port. All, most port B is spare, so I've got pulse in port B dot two. That's pin, uh, yeah, pin or yeah, pin two of port, yeah, of port B. Um, one and zero. You put a one here. I'll tell you about this one in a minute. You got one and zero, and then just call it a variable. So it's n, which I've set to a, a word. And what I'm doing because this is uh, measuring. Pulses from the MSF receiver in microseconds. I'm dividing it by 100 to give you uh, milliseconds on the LCD display. So let M equal N divided by 100, just convert it to milliseconds. If I scroll down so you can see it. Now, what I've done, now is I've, as I say, look at the NPL, the 500 millisecond drop in carrier is a start of a second. I don't know if it's this cheap um, sort of receiver from eBay, it only costs six or seven pounds, something like that, uh, or weather conditions. You can't select 500 milliseconds. I've actually had to come down to 470, otherwise, sometimes I miss the second and my zeros didn't get zeroed, or sorry, my seconds didn't get zeroed, and the clock started running fast. Just copy this out. So if M equals equals or is greater than 470, then LCD out, blah blah blah, minute start, seconds equals naught. I've got a long pause in there so you can see the display pop up, second start, uh, seconds equals seconds plus one, uh, seconds equals about 115. Now, what I'll explain on the scope uh, later is in that data. Coming, coming from the NPL on the MSF time code, you've actually got 120 bits every second. So what I've done is chosen to count the seconds up to minutes at 115 counts from the signals coming in on the pulse in. So you get 120 bits of data a second, uh, sorry, a minute. Uh, in case I miss some of the data or you get poor reception, or the clock's running a bit slow, or whatever. I've got it to update the minutes at 115. Uh, you'll see in a minute. Um, yeah, so that starts updating the minutes and the hours. And what it's doing is only updating every time it gets a signal on a pulse in. It sees a pulse in, and then starts running down this code. Um, there's you have a look at the help file for the pulse pulse in um, help. Help topics. I've got, already got it open there, I think. Pulse in. It says, can you see it at the top? Hopefully you can. It says pulse width on a pin. Uh, if the state is zero, the width of the low pulse is measured. If the state is one, the width of the high pulse is measured. So you see, I had it set to one. It should have a zero because the carrier from the NPL drops and gives you stops giving you look at the signals when the carrier drops. This little receiver, where is it? If I can focus in on it. There it is there. That's the receiver with it. That's the uh, rod. I don't want to run out of time here. 28 seconds left. That's the receiver. Um, it's actually inverting the signal. Uh, so I've had to choose a one and not a naught very quickly. I've only got 18 seconds left and realize I've spent too long on other topics. There's the signal coming in from the NPL. Uh, and you'll see inverted on. That's actually how the signal is received. This board from eBay is inverting it. 